Call the meeting to order. Roll call. Clue? Here. Coppola? Here. Crawford? Here. DiPietro? Here. Maldonado? Here. Santo? Here. Foreman? Here. Open public meeting announcement on January 8, 2020. Official notice of this meeting was given to the press of Atlantic City, the mainland journal The Current, and Gallery Patriot, and duly posted in council chambers and on the township website. Instead of the invitation, we'll have a moment of silence for uh, Mr. Longo, Paul Longo, his son formerly served on this council. So uh, if we could just have a moment.
getting quotes from the two vendors that were here to help upgrade some of this aging equipment. Um, I would absolutely like to thank our GTV staff. Uh, that includes Tom, uh, Mike, Tyler, Melanie, and especially Kim for all their hard work. Um, unfortunately, I think some people gave them a little bit of grief for why this doesn't work, but it's certainly not their fault. So, thank you. Thank you. Committee reports? Okay. We'll move on to uh, ordinances. Ordinance number 2031 of 2020. This is our COLA ordinance, which authorizes uh, to exceed the municipal budget appropriation limit and establish a um, cap bank. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, this is an ordinance that we do every year. <clears throat> Quite frankly, every town in New Jersey probably does this ordinance. Uh, New Jersey has two caps regarding their, their budgets. One is a levy cap. Uh, that cap has to do with the tax levy. This ordinance has to do with the spending cap or the appropriation cap. Currently, you're allowed to increase appropriations 2.5% of prior year's budget. Uh, this ordinance will allow us to increase that number 35 so it allows us to increase appropriations by one additional percentage point. Uh, we do not need, uh, as you'll see later in, in this council meeting when we present the introduction of the budget, we do not need to increase spending by an additional 1%. What this does allow us to do is bank that additional 1% for future years. Uh, you are allowed by law to bank the unused, the unspent portion for up to two years. So because we don't know what's going to happen in the future, it's my recommendation that we do this ordinance, increase what we're allowed to bank, and save it for the future. Thank you. Do I have a motion? I'll make that motion. I'll second. Plute? Yes. Coppola? Yes. Crawford? Yes. DePietro? Yes. Maldonado? Yes. Santo? Yes. Foreman? Yes. Ordinance 2030, 2020. Yep. Authorizing acceptance of the donation of land <coughs> on Ironwood and Danson Avenues. These are uh, basins that uh, belong to different developments. This is second reading. Do we have any comments or motion? Your motion. I'll motion. Open it to the public first. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Any public comment? You're right done? Make a motion we pass. Second. Clue? Yes. Coppola? Yes. Crawford? Yes. DiPietro? Yes. Maldonado? Yes. Santo? Yes. Gorman? Yes. Okay. Resolutions? Yep. We have 8320 with introduction to the 2020 <coughs> municipal budget. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, work began on our 2020 budget last summer in 2019. Uh, that work was performed mainly by our Chief Financial Officer, myself, and each of the department heads. Uh, last summer, they started putting together salary projections, other, other expense projections. Um, beginning in last September, we started meeting with each department uh, to fine tune those numbers. Um, after that, we meet with our auditor to put um, each of those department's budgets into this state document. Um, and then, obviously, we met with the budget committee, and here we are today. Uh, tonight is an introduction. It is the first part, first public part of the process where the document becomes a public document. Uh, after tonight, we would have a public hearing and an adoption. Uh, where the council votes to adopt the budget, and that will be held on March 24th. Um, just to go over the budget, budgets consist of a revenue side and an appropriation side. There are four types of revenue in a municipal budget, one being fund balance. Uh, you are allowed to anticipate in the budget um, a part of our fund balance. Uh, we are anticipating the same amount as 2019. Uh, local revenue is the second type of revenue in our budget. Um, we, our local revenues are up approximately $170,000 from last year. 
Uh, local revenues would include investments, uh, interest on investments, interest on delinquent taxes, licenses, uh, either liquor licenses or mercantile licenses, fines, inspections, cable franchise fees, etc. Uh, state aid is the third type of revenue that funds a municipal budget. Our state aid is the same as last year. Uh, I believe state aid across the state has been frozen for a number of years. Uh, and then we have the tax levy. Um, the tax levy actually I'm going to talk about last after I go through each of the spending highlights. Um, the tax levy is what obviously funds our budget the most and uh, it's obviously what our taxpayers end up paying for. Uh, on the appropriation side, um, this budget increases staffing uh, in the police department. Um, it also adds a laborer um, in public works uh, and an admin person in our fleet. Uh, it also includes one IT, IT person. So obviously as we, um, as time moves on, we become much more IT oriented. And when compared to other towns, uh, we have significantly less staff than other towns. So we have, uh, we have a need to hire an IT professional and that's funded in this budget as well. Uh, regarding other expenses, we have, uh, we increased our O&E from last year by $50,000 for uh, fees so we can begin to uh, foreclose on our municipal liens. So right now, uh, when taxpayers do not pay their full tax bill, uh, it goes to tax sale. Um, when third parties don't pay those delinquent taxes, it reverts back to the township, which means we don't collect the money. So the town then has the right to foreclose on those properties. Uh, we have not foreclosed, uh, we have not done a mass foreclosure in some time, so there are some, some substantial amount of municipal liens that need to be foreclosed on. Uh, also, pension costs are up approximately $65,000. Uh, another item that needs to be uh, brought up is we expand upon, we, or we continue the pay-as-you-go program. Um, that's where we buy capital assets as opposed to borrowing money through a bond ordinance to pay for them. Uh, we're going to fund about $585,000 of building improvements. We're going to fund um, stormwater uh, upgrades of $210,000. We're going to fund $300,000 in playground renovations and $167,000 of various equipment for fire departments. Uh, the last real item, the last real appropriation that I want to that I want to highlight is our debt service. Um, debt service is the principal and interest payment that you make on your debt. Um, there's basically two types of debt: long-term debt, which is done through bonds, and then you have short-term debt that's done through notes. So we will actually be long-term debt-free in 2024. So we have three more years of debt service payments until we're long-term debt-free. So what we're doing is we're aggressively, when we do a bond ordinance, we are aggressively paying that note down. Um, each year as we met, make debt service payments, our debt service for long-term debt decreases. So there is a $580,000 decrease in long-term debt this year. We're actually making, taking that $580,000 and making a, a more aggressive note pay down. Um, the pay as you go and the aggressive pay downs of debt service are, are things that we've been doing for a couple of years that we're continuing to do. Um, so those are the appropriation highlights. Now, now we go back to revenue for a second and talk about the tax levy. So the tax levy um, is $16,788,025. Last year it was $16,746,918. So it's an increase in the tax levy by $41,107. Now the tax levy gets divided by our rateable base. Our rateable base um, is the net valuation of the entire town. It's the sum of all the homes and businesses that we tax. Um, that product, the tax levy divided by the rateable base equals our tax rate. So our tax rate's actually going down two tenths of a cent this year. And that's going to be six years in a row with a rate decrease. Uh, and that's, that's, that's the budget as a, as, as a whole. Uh, like I said, this, the action tonight is the introduction, which makes this budget um, public. And, it, and the next step would be a public hearing and an adoption, which would be March 24th. Thanks, Chris. And I just appreciate all the work that you and all the department heads have done 
it's a great pleasure. Thank you. Uh, th thank you. Actually, that's a. I just have to thank our CFO and all our department heads for all the hard work they put into this. Uh, it does take a lot of time, and um, and they do a fantastic job. <clears throat> So, motion on introduction of the budget. I'll make that motion. Right I just have a, a comment first on this budget, if I may. Sure. I, I, I was anxious to get my hands on this budget, as you can probably understand. And uh, uh, I tell you what, I was I was pleasantly surprised. Um, and I'm addressing that to the budget committee. I'm happy to see this budget being presented tonight. And as Chris said, reflects a tax decrease of two tenths of a cent. Um, and as the manager said, this is our sixth year in a row of municipal tax decreases. The local purpose levy tax is still less than it was in 2013. So the amount that we're taxing our, our residents is still less than it was in, in 2013, which I think is, says a lot. Um, our fund balance was increased. We're using half of that to pay for, to apply towards our new budget. Um, I'm pleased to see the continuation of rapidly paying down our debt. That's an important part of this process. That's an important part of the long-term plan that we have in place. I'm glad to see we're continuing to do that. We have over $2 million, as the manager said, in pay-as-you-go capital in this budget. These are items that we could just easily bond for and spread that out. We could have, you know, if we were irresponsible, I'll make an analogy to your, to your home budget. Instead of going out and, and paying cash for your groceries, you could put it on your credit card. Then you'd have that cash in your pocket still. But that's not real cash. You're gonna to have to owe that down the road. So this budget doesn't do doesn't use funny stuff. We're paying for it as we go. And I'm glad to see that uh, that there's new sets of eyes on this because I've heard a lot of talk about this budget being artificial and it's five years of tax decreases not being real and we're we're pushing it down the road. We're not pushing it down the road. And I think it's it's evident now that everybody can get their eyes on this thing. It's always been Transparent for everyone. The budget's handed out to all of us on council here every single year, and to the as public a document for the public also. But it's nice to everybody to see that, that we're doing the right thing here in Galloway, and I'm, and I'm pleased to see that continue under the current leadership. Uh, it's important, as we said, two million dollars in pay as you go capital that could easily be shifted to bond payments, and we could have we could have an artificial tax decrease to, just to make us look good, but we're not. We're, we're thinking about the future. This is a long-term budget with long-term planning. And also, I'd like to see that the utility budget is in rock-solid shape and, and will not require a tax increase either. So those of you who receive a utility bill won't be seeing an increase in that either. So that's great. And, and people were saying to me, you know, they see me all the time in the street, and they say to me, why aren't, why aren't you mad? Why aren't you yelling and screaming up here on on council, I have a friend of mine who's a car guy, and he says to me, this is an analogy he made, that you, know, that you get your car stolen, they stole your car. They stole your car and they're smashing it up. I said, wait a second. I said, maybe I'm not happy about what happened, but the car's not smashed. The car's not smashed yet, yet. I'm not happy with the choices of some of the people and some professionals, but and I made that clear, but moving on, if my car does get smashed, I'll be upset and yell and kick and scream, but as of right now, we're in rock solid shape. This is a great budget. I fully support it, and uh, I appreciate the work of our manager and CFO and all of our department heads that went into this budget, and uh, looking forward to seeing it getting passed at, uh, at the second reading. Thank you. number of police officers. We have four shifts. Uh, we had ten officers, ten officers, nine officers, nine officers. Now adding two, we have full ten officers for every shift now. Um, so we're, we're looking really good. And I'm really happy with the reorganization of the fleet department. I think um, the work that Matt and Chris did to restructure that department is really going to be helping us make a very efficient township. And if you think of all the police vehicles uh, and other apparatus that we have to service, having that department up and running at full strength and in a very efficient manner is going to help across the across the entire township. So um, some really good changes that occurred in this, able to make those positive changes yet still keeping that, that tax rate slightly lower every time. So thank you.
thanks to all the department heads and Chris, really great work on it. And also, uh, I meant to thank uh, Tony and Mary for working on the uh, budget committee with all of us. I appreciate that. Okay. Motion to pass. We already have a motion from Councilman DePetris. So you just need someone to second. Second. Okay. Clute? Yes. Popolo? Yes. Crawford? Yes. DePetro? Yes. Maldonado? Yes. Santo? Yes. Foreman? Yes. Payment of the bills? Yep. Resolution 7320, payment of the bills in the amount of $8,887,000. $212.24. Do I have any questions on the bills? Or from the audience? Have a motion? Have a motion. Second. Lou? Yes, but I'm going to upstream for my three fire department long rounds. Sure. Coppola? Yes. Crawford? Yep. DePietro? Yes. Maldonado? Yes. Santo? Yes. Gorman? Yes. <coughs> Closed session tonight? We don't have any merit. Okay. Then uh, 8020. Resolution 8020, authorizing change order number one to Arawak uh, leaving in the amount of $44,072 for the 2019 road program. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, uh, this is a change order to a previous contract. Uh, the contract was awarded to Arawak, which was bid. Um, the original contract amount was $1,479,000. Uh, this change order is going to add additional drainage in the Cologne section of town, specifically Woodhaven. Uh, it'll add three A inlets, 22 feet of 12-inch uh, <coughs> ductile iron pipe, and 100 linear feet of 24-inch perforated pipe. Thank you. Do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Second. Clue. Yes. Coppola. Yes. Crawford. Yes. DiPietro. Yes. Maldonado. Yes. Santo? Yes. Foreman? Yes. The consent agenda? Yes. Consen consent agenda includes items of business which are not controversial and do not require individual discussion. A motion approving the consent is moved, seconded, and voted upon as one item by Township Council. If any discussion is requested on the consent, it is removed from the consent to the regular agenda. Resolution 7520, authorizing application and acceptance of a Cops and Shops Summer Shore Grant. 7620, authorizing charitable roadway solicitation for the Police Unity Tour. 7720, authorizing amendment to the Resolution 5520. 7820, authorizing cancellation and refunding of taxes at 547 Chatham Way for Disabled Veterans Act. 7920, authorizing ex execution of the estoppel certificate for Oak Street Landfill Project. 8120, authorizing another charitable roadway for Pomona Fire Volunteer Fire Company. 8220, authorizing refund of tax overpayments. And then we have two firemen's applications on tonight to be approved. Is there anything that anybody wants taken out? Do I have a motion? Second. Clue? Yes, but I'm going to take the same for the fire department. Sure. Coppola? Yes. Crawford? Yes. DePietro? Yes. Maldonado? Yes. Santo? Yes. Foreman? Yes. The manager's report. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Just a couple of calendar items. Uh, March is our senior bulk waste collection period. Uh, senior 65 or older are to come into Public Works if they have bulk items they need picked up and register. Um, March 20th, uh, everyone should have received a sewer bill by now. Uh, March 20th is the due date for the first half of the year. September 20th will be the due date for the second half of the year. Um, and just one other item, um, I would like to thank one of our council employees, uh, public worker, 
uh, John Schwabel. Uh, last week, I believe, there was an incident where a vehicle was um, dumping material along our roadways, uh, which could have caused damage to other vehicles as they drove over it. Uh, John was able to find the individual and, uh, and remedy the situation. So I want to thank John Schwabel for his hard work going above and beyond. Thank you. Council, any comments? Starting with Rich. I just like to thank Chris and the staff for the great job we did on the budget. Yeah, again, I'd like to echo uh, Rich's comments. Great job on the budget to the, all the department heads. So much work goes into that. People don't understand how long it takes to put this budget together. It's it's literally a six months process. And uh, we start half the year, we, we get about six months of reprieve, and then we start with next year's budget all over again. So excellent work. Uh, I'm glad we, the sales continue the progress. And uh, I'd just like to end with a sincere condolences to the Longo family. Uh, and our thoughts and prayers are with them. <laughs> Yeah, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Uh, yeah, again, just thanks to the Budget Committee. Excellent job, Krista Manning, obviously Chris, and the heads of our departments. And um, it's great to see some new hires as well, two new police officers and uh, an IT specialist as well. As we know, we've had some technology issues of late. And of course, with our Pro Phoenix system, it's always good to see that um, being managed as efficiently as possible. Uh, besides that, thank you very much. Thank you. Robert. I'm being a, uh, just want to note, uh, put on the record that uh, for several weeks that I've been coming here, uh, I haven't been really too happy about uh, certain allegations made against me. And I really feel that this is my job. My job is to come here to serve the people of Galloway Township. I totally understand that you have disagreed with decisions that I've made, but this is my job. My job here is to come here. This is where I have to feel comfortable enough to be with my colleagues up here and do what I have to do. But it's my work environment. And for it to be a hostile work environment for me, I just don't know what to think other than to excuse myself after these meetings. And I just wanted to put on the record, Mayor, Deputy Mayor, members of council, that I would not sit here and be tolerating the abuse that certain people have. So after my uh, discussion, I will be uh, going off the dice until the next meeting schedule. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, he doesn't want to be counted. You don't want to listen to the people. <laughs> no, no yelling out. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We can have our say when he has his say. Are you public comment? Thank you. He's not here to hear it now. Who's the mayor? So, uh, so, Mayor, you, you guys you agree want, with you that? You need to take control, Mayor. You're going I think, to be, I think no, everybody can speak on the public side. Everybody should be there for public comment. Don't you agree? I'll be here for public comment. Do you agree with every, everybody should be? I don't agree with everybody on everything. Okay. It's on the council. Just a big thank you to all the department heads, to Chris, to Christian Man Chris and Manning, and everyone involved with taking this budget so seriously. It's just amazing how true long-term financial planning can be so beneficial to this township. And it's nice to see another year of a tax decrease. Secondly, I'd like to extend my condolences to the Longo family. Thank you. Um, I just also wanted to, in addition to the Longo family, and condolences there, and also to the, the Merritt family. We had, a, a, unfortunately, a fatality uh, in Galloway, an accident on uh, Route 9 at Meeks Point, so condolences to that family. And there's also a serious accident on Route 30, so um, take it easy up there. Um, try and drive safe and, and really focus on where you're going. Um, I also had the opportunity yesterday, I believe it was, um, the, our surrogate for Atlanta County, James Curcio, came to the library and did a presentation on uh, the documents you should have, everyone should have, uh, which includes a will, a uh, advanced directive, a directive also known as a living will, and a power of attorney. 
and he does some a great presentation. If you get to go there, we're going to have him back again. Uh, maybe we'll have it at the senior center. Uh, but he give out some great information about you know the basic necessities of having a will. We are very fortunate in Atlanta County. Um, the surrogate's office is really responsive. If you go in with a document that you're not sure about, they will review it for you um, and give you some advice as well on it. Um, they're very approachable and very, very, very efficient office. Um, we've had that happen. Come on. The last thing I wanted to uh, speak up was we've we've been over to Stockton a number of times and asked them regarding having our citizens be able to, our residents be able to access classes at Stockton. Um, so actually today there was a great article about the Institute for Lifelong Learning um, that they are putting out a new program providing academic enrichment for individuals without the cost and commitment of college. They're offering non-credit uh, academic classes for 45 bucks at the beginning uh, with a two four week course on um, plays and poetry at the Galloway campus. So please do check out the Stockton uh, website if you're interested. Uh, we want to encourage uh, this kind of um, integration and, uh, for our residents with Stockton. So this is a great start. We hope people will be able to take advantage and, and go to those classes. That's all I got to say. Thank you. I just want to thank everybody again that worked on the budget. You know, at, as Tony said, it was a long process, and we're in a very good place. And uh, outside of that, you know, my sorrow goes out to the uh, families that uh, lost their loved ones this week. That'll be all. Madam can you advise me of uh, any concerns or complaints that the community has? Uh, why don't you stay and listen to him yourself? <laughs> I just be Galloway Township. Uh, is that legal? I mean, what are the rules here? Can anybody just walk off the days when they don't like something? Is that how we conduct a meeting? Is that how the rules are going to be from now on? That he could just walk off and you don't like something, Tony, you're going to get up? You don't like something, Jim, you're going to walk off? Is this how we're going to conduct public meetings now? What's the answer? I don't have an answer right now, Mrs. J. Would you I, look into it, Jim, no. please? I mean, it, <clears throat> yes. Please. Thank you. I will. Okay. I mean, if you want to leave a board, I mean, you can't force the matter. We, we know it's legal. Listen, Listen we don't conduct things like that here in Galloway. I, I, I don't know time. where you're from. Ma'am, you don't need to allow me. We can't force the man to stay here. But, it, he's but he's not an obligation and he gets paid when he attends these meetings. If he's not going to fully attend the meeting, then he should not get fully paid. And after that. And by the way, he didn't leave yet because the only door out is there. He's in the back. Just one at a time. Mr. Bastard. Do you want to speak him up to the microphone? All right. And up to that now, let's calm down. I, uh, all right. There was an article in the newspaper um, written about me, for which I'm very humble. But there was people that were left out because there was not enough space in the article and, and things of that nature. So I'm not a martyr. And I didn't do all this on my own. So there is a few people here tonight that I want to recognize. The first one I will put, Nick Russo is not here. Nick Russo was one of the first people that was on the committee for the Senior Center. When we had the Senior Center, we had a committee. The Senior Advisory Board, Nick was on it. Nick did a lot of things, made a, a lot of good points and a lot of good issues. Nick is in here, but he helped out a tremendous amount with the Senior Center. Second of all, Tom Bassford, get up, Tom. <laughs> Get on, Tom. Let them see who you are. Yeah, I think they've seen me. Uh, Tom Basford was, was mayor and was also on the council when we did the Jessica Lunkers Act. Is that right, Michelle? Yes. All right. Tom's input was very instrumental at that time. He did a good job. He helped us get the letters that we needed to get to, to the governor. He helped us with the senators. He did a very good job. So I want you people to know that he's part 
of why your kids are safe today. All right? He's one of them. There's Michelle right there. Get up, Michelle. <laughs> Go on, get up. Michelle is one of the originals of the Cuffs Committee. Michelle worked very, very hard. She was a coordinator of the Cuffs Committee. She handled everything, made all the appointments and everything of that nature. So Michelle worked very hard. She's another reason why your kids are safe today. And mind you, this law, to become a law, took us 12 years, correct, Michelle? Things don't work fast in Congress, unfortunately. All right, so that was that. We have Dee, Dee Keen. She's not here. She was uh, in charge of the Neighborhood Watch. And we have Jim Gorman. That's sitting right there. Jim Gorman was very instrumental in the Jessica Lundford's Act. you got to give fair. He was. He helped us with it. He did what he could with the Jessica Lundford's Act. And he was very instrumental in the senior center. I went up there plenty of times and saw Jim painting and spackling. You and Dennis Kleiner, correct? You don't want me spackling. No, <laughs> Dennis was spackling. You were painting. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of good people and a lot of good things. And I just wanted you to know that because these people have to be recognized. You know... Yeah, I was the chairwoman. Yeah, I spearheaded a lot of this, but you don't work alone. And when you have good people, and you have good committees, and you have people who are just as passionate as you are about these things, it, it, it's good. It's a good thing. Okay, so that was that. Now I'm going to go, but you're going to have a problem with me with the trash, Jim. You know I'm opposed to trash. You know I think that the seniors are not going to get a fair shake with the trash. Because right now, a lot of us share the trash. We don't consider it stealing. We consider it sharing. And uh, we're going to have a problem with that. So I'm going to bump you. It's anyway, the first time you told me this, Ms. I know. This is about the 20th time. Okay. Now, Mary, at the last meeting, when, when you were questioned you st uh, about seeing other things and whatever and what direction you were going in, you said something about buildings. What do you mean about buildings? P putting up new buildings, doing something with existing building? What did you mean by that? Uh, I have to admit that I don't remember. Okay. <laughs> All right. Sorry. Okay, because I just yeah. wanted to know, what, because we have a lot of vacant buildings. Yeah. We and I didn't know. know if you were going to reconstruct them or we were going to use them for other things. I mean, what are we going to do? With all these vacant buildings here. Yeah, of course we want to fill them. I think uh, that's that's a clear objective uh, to, to advise to get more businesses uh, going in existing buildings first. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, anybody look into the double dipping that Robert did? Anybody look into that? The, uh, yeah. So, um, information was provided to Chris. Chris provided information to me after the meeting. Uh, so, obviously, there was a workers' comp situation with his primary employer, which is an, essentially the business of this township, whatever he was claiming through his employees between him and his primary employer. Um, I think what the question is, is for at least for the township basis, is should he have been receiving pay for council meetings that he wasn't attending? Um, you're not going to like the answer that I'm going to give, and I, and I understand that. Um, we do have an ordinance which calls for council people to be paid as long as they're council people. The ordinance doesn't state that they are docked pay for missing meetings, nor does the policy manual. I also inquired with Chris as to whether there's been a past practice of docking pay for council people that miss meetings, and there hasn't been at all in the past. It is certainly something that this council could consider. Um, per state law, it's up to council whether or not council people are paid, and then if they are, it's up to the council to determine how that payment is made. It can be a, on a meeting, uh, meeting by meeting basis. There can be docs of pay if you don't attend meetings, but that's not something that we have in our provisions here. Well, see, this is the first time this has ever happened. We've never had a councilman collect from two places before. This is the first time, and we've never had a councilman miss as many meetings as. Councilman Rob, uh, Robert Maldonado. Well, we're all full time. I would imagine all of the council people. I didn't. What did you say, Maggie? We all work at different places. Right, that's what it's I was going to say. You, you we, all collect pay. We all get paid from our regular day jobs. This definitely doesn't pay the bills. 
when so, he was doing the workers' comp, because so, he wasn't getting paid by his employer. Instead, he was getting paid by workers' comp. So that still entitles him to not come to any township meetings. He could be removed from council if he missed eight meetings in a row. So there's a state statute that said if you miss eight in a row, you can be removed from council if you don't have a medical reason. Apparently, and this predates me, but all the minutes that were provided show that he, I guess, indicated that he's going to be out for medical reasons, and that was stated on the record in the minutes, so that statute wouldn't apply. Well, then you know what? Maybe we, but we ought to look into that. We ought to look into that, council, because that's not right. You're not here. You shouldn't get paid. Any other job that you don't show up to, you don't get paid. Why is this job any different? I believe we have a local ordinance that if you miss three or four in a row without being excused, we consider your seat surrendered. Yeah, your local ordinance is even tougher than state law, but again, if he has a medical note. Yeah, but see, you're still missing the point. The point is, yes, he had a medical reason, and he got paid from his employer for that medical reason. But yet he got a paycheck from here. Yeah, the council doesn't pay disability. I mean, that don't make sense. And I'm not a lawyer. I did tell you what my. I know what you what you found, and I'm just telling you the way I feel. That's ridiculous. And maybe we need to do some council may need to uh, to uh, revisit revisit right. that. that. That would be the solution because the way it's set up now is the, is the pay is based on your role as a council. Well, let me person. tell you something. I got to tell you, when when a normal person shakes hands, they go like this to shake a hand. When Robert shakes hands, it's like this. <laughs> From all the baloney that that he grasses that he's got. Oi, oi, oi. I don't know. All right. Last but not, uh, uh, and what about the negotiations? Has any negotiations been done other than the four to, to uh, that Bob Mueller brought up the last time he was here? For the professionals that were hired? Yes. Okay, there has been other negotiations. Okay. Well, actually, at the last meeting, everything, two meetings ago, correct? Well, he said they only, only four came down. No, they all came down. There were certain things he was questioning that certain professionals don't charge to do. Oh, okay. So that's why there wasn't a price for it. All right, so we're good with that, Jim. Yes. Okay. Last but not least, Chris, how's our senior, uh, senior center going? Are we getting any more money? Oh, oh. <clears throat> so every year we apply for the um, CDBG funds to do capital improvements of the senior center. And yes, there is an application for 2020 for additional funds. Thank you. That's all I wanted to know. <coughs> I, I'm sorry. My senior center is my name. Uh, my name is Tom Bass with 29 South New York Road. What Mr. Maldonado did, listen, we've had other council people in the past who've had to run, they got meetings, they got family obligations, but they wanted to make a council meeting, but they couldn't stay for a long public participation, which lately we've had. But council needs to do something. I would ask council to pass a resolution at the next meeting, somehow stating that councilmen cannot intentionally get up to a meeting and intentionally, basically, he just told everybody, I can't take the heat, so I'm getting out of the kitchen, and I ain't listening to the public or nothing. That ain't right. I can see if once in a while he had to leave an emergency, something comes up, things happen. I know that. We can't stay sometimes for the whole meeting, for a whole two, three hour meeting, whatever it may be. But I would ask counsel at the next meeting, I don't know how it's got to be worded, it just came up, so, but something should be done that Maybe council people have to stay for the whole meeting or they don't get a full paycheck. Something's got to be done. We can't have a council piece person come up here. One, and I'm going to stay on this as long as he's on council. He intentionally went to a contractor and got work done on his property for no cost. That is wrong. I don't know if it's illegal. If it isn't, it sure as hell should be. Don't you all agree? Would you ever do that? 
No. Would anybody up there ever think about doing it, let alone doing it? I was up there for 12 years. I would, it never even would cross my mind to go to a contractor doing work near me and ask for $10 worth of work, let alone five, seven, ten thousand, whatever the value of the work that he got done on his property. And that's why we're doing the recall petition, in my mind. Not for what he did at the reorg meeting and changed and made Jim the mayor instead of Tony, even though it was overwhelming. That's not the reason. What he did is wrong and it's illegal. And council should not stand for a councilman basically telling the audience, I'm not listening to you anymore. I'm out of here. That is wrong. Something's got to be done. And I would hope at the next council meeting, a resolution is drawn up somehow. I don't know how it's got to be worded, but that cannot stand. And for, for the rest of council to allow that to stand is wrong. And I'm sure it'll, it'll come up as a resolution. And if, and if it does, it'll fail four to three, right? I'm sure it will. I'm sure it'll fall along lines like it has for the, since January 1. But something has got to be done where that should not happen. I'm sorry. Good evening. Uh, my name is Josh Smith. I live at 228 Great Creek Road. Uh, before I get started, I wanted to thank you guys for the uh, work on the budget and things to hear my taxes will be up again this year. <clears throat> Um, I would like to discuss the speeding traffic on uh, Great Creek Road. Um, our road has a uh, passing section, section which has been encouraging people to pass and exceed the 35 mile an hour strictly enforced uh, speed limit. Um, and it seems that people have been using Great Creek Road as an expressway to bypass Jimmy Leeds Road and I know that we've done a great job with the recent road work in which alleviated some of the traffic, but there's still backups at the lights and they like to shoot down uh, Great Creek Road to bypass all of that. <clears throat> and uh, which leads me into what happened recently. In the past month, we've had two cars that have uh, sped past buses with their stop signs out. Uh, just last week, my daughter narrowly missed being hit. Um, now, I want to thank the police station for the great work that they've done. I went that day. Um, they've sent officers out to the street just to monitor what's going on and slow traffic down for the time being. But this is a uh, temporary thing. Once the officers are gone, people go back to speed. Um, I'm not quite sure where I should go, which committee I should talk to, um, but I'm here today to find out how I can start a process to maybe stop or figure out how to slow the traffic down on Great Creek Road. We have, we have a public safety committee meeting coming up um, for the next council meeting. It's something that we can discuss and possibly address a little further. Which, which section of Great Creek? Uh, so we're between um, uh, the Wimberg uh, Funeral Home and um, Pitney Road. Okay. Uh, that, that one section right there, that's where the, the passing line is. And it's a 35 mile, 35 mile an hour street that's strictly enforced. And there's a lot of kids riding their bikes up and down. And um, it's just concerning because I get past daily, and just with the, the buses recently, you know, the people shooting past them doing 30, 40 miles an hour, that's really concerning. Um, you know, it's a shame that the buses do have cameras, but they're not good enough to catch the license plates, the cars moving that fast. Um, you know, it, it's just a shame. So if we could, you know, look into that, that would be great. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. I'm Perry, 24 South Odessa Avenue. Um, just to, real quick to address Councilman Maldonado. Uh, Jim, you're right. It was three, or, three meetings, consecutive meetings, and if you did not go to three consecutive meetings, Council could then <coughs> vote to forfeit the seat. But the part you're missing is he came and said he was on medical. That's a big difference because if he didn't do that, I believe the existing Council up here would vote him out. That's the problem. So that's what you need to look into. He gave an excuse why he couldn't come for three consecutive meetings because of his excuse for the medical. On top of it, he was getting paid for it. It's not about past practice about not coming to a meeting and not getting paid for it. The reason is 
he used an excuse on medical, which he did. He had a medical excuse from his previous job. But where it comes down to is he used that as a crutch to Galloway Township to collect twice. And I think that's where it comes down. And, you know, I, I look at it too with, uh, you know, Mr. Solicitor, I, I believe, and I don't want to call you out on it, but I think that since you've been up here and tell the council they don't have to answer questions, please address this, please address that, is one of the reasons why Council Mamadamada got our left. Because there's no accountability for this council anymore. So the people that elect them, it seems like that our rights have been taken away. For, and I understand why you gave him that advice, because it's legal advice. But I believe giving him that advice gives him the ability to walk out of the room. Because he thinks there's no accountability, and he thinks, I don't have to answer the questions. The solicitor told me I don't have to answer the questions. So at that point, then, I just leave. But I, I can only give them. I, 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 I understand. I understand. It. Well, my, my point being is, you see, like when Mrs. Jake is passionate about sure. what she's discussing, because you got a councilman that was elected by the people for the people and sit up there and if you're not going to answer the questions from 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 the taxpayers and you're not going to give any answers and you're not going to give any public input what the hell is the sense of being up here sure no like i stated i don't think there's anything you can do from a mechanism to keep them here but i think how you can control it is is through revisiting pay well so and and to bring that up so as as we're talking about him you know you you've, you've been here for since the beginning of the year, you've heard the complaints from the public, and you know Councilman Basser just brought them up. Has anybody ever looked into him getting the street paved? Did anybody? I mean, this is talking governing body wise. I mean, I know that other people have sent stuff already to the Attorney General's office and the Prosecutor's office, but when it comes to sitting at the mic and bringing these the, these obligation of him sitting up here as a councilman and using his office, ha have we or the council or yourself as counsel looked into any of these allegations that he's nothing substantiated has come across my desk yet i don't know if it's come across yours chris i know there's been discussion here about those things and other things in the past well i think could, could that look i mean even though it's getting looked at on the outside i think it, looking at it and checking your own house to make sure that what he did obviously there's enough documentation out there because you do you do look at the the open requests that come through because that's what the solicitor does. It's overwhelming that the, 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 the information and the evidence that's come forth and people have requested. So if you could get that information and review it, because you know maybe you can give a different answer than what the public is, is foreseeing, because as we see it, everybody has, seems to be on the same outcome. This, he used his office, he got his street paid, he had the gas company come out and do, do work, extra work at his house, and it's all through township documents that we've got the information. It's not that we've gone anywhere else to get them. So possibly, if you could look into that. The information comes to me, and I'm asked to render a ruling by the township. Well, I'm asking. Well, so, so, I'm I, I, so I'm asking you, so Mr. Gorman and the governing body asked the solicitor to look into what the taxpayers have been coming up here and questioning Mr. Maldonado about. Because I believe that somebody deserves an answer. So it's in your court, but I, I, you know, we asked you about the, the workman's comp issue, that got looked into. You're looking at somebody using their office for this game, is somebody going to look into it? That's, that's, that's that part. So my other question is to um, Mary, when you brought up the part for the police department, how many, how many police officers do we have now? 61, I believe. No. 59. 59. And then we'll be at 61. Okay. Okay, so that was my point. So I just want to make sure that we're, we're hiring two police officers on top of the 58 that we currently have, correct? 59, 59. 59 to 61, I'm sorry. Correct. Okay. Um, so what is the total budget right now that you just introduced? Anybody know? You look at it. Okay, so out of that, you, what do you think the percentage of your public safety is? About a large part. Large, probably uh, half, probably, probably about 50%. Yeah, but I would, you're probably okay. close. So I'm good that that's, that's getting funded through the police department because that's, that's obviously one of the main concerns that we have. But, um, you know, one of the other things I want to make sure of is our police department. I mean, if you look at it, the, there's a text message back there from, from, I believe, 2018 that there was an NJ article that Mary had questioned about excessive force 
through Galloway, and it was about that they, you know, did that meeting ever happen between yourself and the police department? You said about looking into a meeting? No, we uh, reviewed the article and took a look uh, at that time and didn't see anything that was really outstanding that we needed to address. Okay, good. Okay. So, so going back to the, our, our, our tax issue, so now that we introduced the budget, is there any other more cuts that you see coming, or do you think this, this budget that you put forward is going to be the one that's going to get adopted? I think it'll be very close. If not, the whole thing will be adopted. Okay, good, good. So back to Councilman Maldonado. I think that everybody up here does what they can to come to meetings. If it's putting your personal life aside, your business, your work, I think that this governing body should pass some kind of censorship against Councilman Maldonado for exactly what he's doing. Because if he was doing what he was supposed to be doing, nobody from the public would be able to throw any rocks at him. So if he's worried about his personal feelings, I believe that you guys should do a vote, and it doesn't have to be tonight, but you should censor any councilman that, or councilwoman that would not listen to the, the public for any kind of criticism that they might bring up. So again, like Tom said, we'll fall on a, a, a four well, it can't be four because he probably won't be here to vote on it. But if it comes on a 3-3 vote, uh, there's nothing hiding people requesting the public not to talk to their council or their representation. So I ask, again, on behalf of Councilman Bassford, or Mayor Bassford, please look forward to passing something. For him, he wants to come up here, he wants to be an elected official, and you want to say it's your job? Well, I don't know why he finally found it's his job, because he never showed up before. But now he wants to find it his job? Then sit through the whole meeting. Don't sit through pieces of it. And the veterans, veterans, 11-11, he came here, walked through, shook your hand. Jim, Mary, said hi to you, and he walked out before the meeting even started. He's on that committee. He's on the Veterans Advisory. It was Veterans Day. So please, if you could, somebody make a motion to put something forth and censor him for what he's doing. Thank you. My name's Al Syverson. I live at uh, 264 East Ridgewood here in Galloway. I've lived here since 1985. I love Galloway. I love this town. I raised my three daughters here, and uh, I just love, li I love living here. Mary Tony, I want to thank you for the kind words you shared at the last meeting. I couldn't be here. My wife and I were in Cape May celebrating my retirement, so I, I really wanted to be here. I thought about leaving that evening and going back to our place we stayed, but uh, my wife didn't go for that, so. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna pretend Robert's here. Uh, Robert uh, used to be a good friend of mine, but my, my wife and I both wrote letters to him, and they both came back. I guess he's not receiving any mail at his house. I know he had the right address, but uh, my wife and I both wrote him letters just sharing our feelings about the situation. But I uh, keep being reminded of uh, the decisions uh, Decision he made to switch switch parties last fall. We all know the Republicans won by a large margin to re-elect Tony Rich and Tony. Uh, by, 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 by switching, you're not voting with the best interests of the uh, township residents. I keep being reminded of Robert whenever I'm watching TV. Have you seen the new Chevy commercial? People are saying uh, we switched, I switched. Uh, I just can't get them out of my mind. I'll tell you the truth, when I first heard about what he had done. I, had, uh, I couldn't sleep for two or three nights. Uh, I was getting up, my wife said, what's going on? I said, I was just really bothered by, by what Robert had done. I feel bad that Robert was upset about the Judas poster, but uh, last time uh, I was here, I, was, I wasn't at the last meeting, but uh, I believe that's, uh, that's kind of what he did. He sold us out. And uh, I was wondering if Tony, uh, was Tony still not on the finance committee? Uh, last time I heard uh, that he was removed from the finance committee. Is he no longer on the finance committee? Or? Not at this time. Tony DiPietro is. Okay. Because I felt Tony did a great job and he knows, uh, I think he knows more about the finances of Galloway Township than anybody. Uh, having a hard, hard time understanding uh, why we just couldn't have left things the way they were. Uh, things were going just fine, in my opinion. Uh, Robert, I'm trying to figure out what to say to my church prayer team that prayed for you to be elected the last time you ran. Uh, all of them, as well as myself, are still uh, very disappointed about the decision to do what he did. Uh, Robert, in my opinion, I think your, your political career may be over. 
after this term yeah. is over or if you get uh, recalled. I'm not sure what's... Uh, I think you just show that you can't be trusted. But uh, I've been pretty quiet uh, this whole time, and I'm still, still very disappointed at what, uh, what took place and what, what came down. Uh, Tony, I think, uh, Tony Tocqueville, you've been one of the best mayors we've ever had since I've lived here in Galloway. But I just want to share that I had to get that off my heart. Thanks. My, my name is uh, Kishore Galani. I have been, I've been a long time resident of Galloway Township. And uh, I have been for many years a Republican candidate. I supported always the Republican Party. Uh, four years ago, I got a phone call from Don Party saying, Kish, I'm very thankful to you because I almost lost the election. Because you helped me, I, I won the election. After that, things started to go wrong. Two years later, I supported the Democratic Party to teach Republicans the lesson. There were seven Republicans and no Democrat. When I supported Democrat, out of four, I got rid of four, three Republicans. Because they gave me a hard time, they jumped me around, they tortured me, they were giving me a hard time. So I took care of the three. Now last election, my wife was sick in the hospital for two and a half months. During the election, I could not work. So I could not help the Democratic Party. But next time, you will see what I can do again. Because I'm the biggest developer in Galloway Township. About 40 to 50 million dollars worth of commercial development I have done in Galloway Township that most of you people don't even know nothing about it. You know. And I, I supported Republican because I'm a Republican person. But if they want to screw me, I can screw them just as well. And you will see next election what happens. And uh, what Maldonado did, what he thought was the right thing to do, just because you're Republican doesn't mean you can support all the con artists. My name is Ken Kashnick. I live on Caribbean Lane. Um, a couple points. I've been listening to this for the last couple weeks, last couple meetings, and it's just the character attacks are really something else. But just the, the misinformation and just the lack of like really thinking this through. Um, let's start with you know Maldonado. Mr. Maldonado voted as is his right to, to for the for uh, Mr. Berman's mayor. So that is the way the council set up. That's just how it works. If you don't like it, you have options, you, and you can exercise them. Um, I think it's important to note, everyone talked about it last night, that Mr. Pollock won the uh, election by the most votes in uh, 20, 2019, and that actually happened, um, and he didn't get mayor. But in, in 2017, Jim Gorman won most votes, and he turned around and voted for, for uh, Tony to be mayor. So, um, you know, people exercise their rights based on what they think is best for the town, and I think that's what happened here. So that's just one point. Um, thank you, I'm talking. Um, so, regarding this whole thing with the, the Maldonado's construction on the ark, um, th this happened in, in uh, March of 2017, when Don Perry was mayor. And the construction <coughs> work order was signed by Palestina's firm. So, you know, Palestina did this stuff for Maldonado, or whatever circumstances, don't know. Maybe it was a favor, maybe it was the right thing to do. but. It was signed off by the former administration, and they sat on it for two years. So what did they know? They've been waiting for two years to bring us up and say, aha, now you didn't like, do something we like, now we're going to get you. Same thing with the limo. Don Purdy asked for the limo. So now all of a sudden it's a problem that he got a limo. It just seems like, oh, this is sour grapes, and, and we, we know we got something on you. We're going to bring it up now. So let's go back to 2013, when Paul Stephen was actually appointed as the engineer. And he's from Northfield, but we fired Dixon, who was right across the street and was a Galloway resident. Um, what was the, the comment then, Mayor Purdy? Dixon's been here a long time, but it's just one of those things. So, I mean, you, you guys are all full outraged about something that's exactly what the, you know you guys have done 
for the last couple of years. So it's just hard to hard to understand how everybody's freaking out because we changed engineers, and the explanation was they wanted to make a change. That's exactly the same explanation that was given the last time. So what's up with that? It just seems like um, it's sour grapes, and it is distorting the truth or distorting the facts so that they fit your narrative because you don't like the fact that somebody voted as is their prerogative. And, and really, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. So the more I look at this, and the more I see people getting all worked up over this and character attacks, now I don't like any more than any of you did that he walked out here tonight and didn't listen to this, because yeah. I think that's wrong uh -huh. as a citizen. And you know that doesn't make any sense at all. And, and maybe they should think about censoring him or docking his pay in the future. It seems like the stuff from whenever he was out on medical, that's water under the bridge. And again, a former administration. So um, the time to look into that was then, not now. But any of his future actions, you know, it's, rep it's, it's right that we should look at them. And, and maybe there should be some consequences for him to decide to walk out. Because I think he'd like to hear, I would like, I'd like to have heard from him. I would like to have heard him explain himself. I, I'm not blind to what's going on here. Um, you know, but, but this kind of, these character attacks in general, that's why he left. Let's stick to the facts. Let's look at the facts. They're all out there for you to see. And just writing things in a, cast them in a certain light so it makes your point is is actually un-American and it is just a bunch oh, of crap. So thank So, sir, I'm sorry, I didn't get your first name, yeah. but yeah. my point being is you want to go back to 2013. If you did follow Galloway politics and you knew exactly what was going on, this town was broke, okay? So we re we redid everything in 2012 and 13, okay? We had about $280,000 sitting in the bank. We couldn't even pay bills. We were laying off police officers back in 2010-11, okay? Do you think by any chance, and I'm not going to turn around and sit up here and talk bad about another engineering firm, because Mr. Dix is a nice guy. And he, he, he put millions of dollars into the economy in Galloway Township. But when you go there and you renegotiate and try to get rates that are cheaper because your town can't afford it and you can't afford to pay your bills. So if you knew everything that you thought you knew what you were talking about, okay, which you don't. That's why we did that. Okay? So it wasn't like the council just did and hire an engineer, bring him in, and give him a contract, and then want to go back and renegotiate it. This town was broke. Yeah, that's not what you said in the newspaper. Though. Well, listen, if you actually came to the meetings back then, you would understand it too. But I'm not going to sit here and debate with you over that. Just one at a time, please. Right. My, my, my point being is, if you turn around and want to character assassinate anybody, you got a gentleman who just sat up here and turned around and said how he's going to headhunt this and do this and do this with money. He paid for all you guys to be up here. The guy didn't give the Republican Party $11,500. So don't let him sit up here and say anything about anybody and him controlling any seats. Because, Jim, I think that you being the head and the senior guy of the Democratic Party should say something, Mr. Galani. He wants to come up here and make, make statements about Galloway Township and who controls what. It's all about the almighty dollar. And if you want to go back to Mr. Maldonado having that work done in his yard in 2017, First of all, how do we know that? It was signed off. The reason why we knew it afterwards is because when I opened it, I found an email from the guy from the gas company. Mm -hmm. So we don't follow all of that stuff. Okay, so don't make uh, 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 um, accusations against anybody unless you know the facts. Because everybody up here wants to sit here and cost money. You want to sit here, I guys to make your statements, that's fine. But when you got a guy that isn't even here because he knows he did wrong and doesn't want to Take his time up with the taxpayers of Galloway Township. So you can sit up here and say everything you want to say, but make sure your facts are right when you're saying it. It's all about money. This town was broke. And I wish this many people came to council meetings back then because they could have seen how bad it was when we had to take 14 badges and guns. And it wasn't good. And we renegotiated every contract, including the engineer. So now you want to sit here when we got almost $11 million in surplus and paying our bills without borrowing money and paying debt off. Now you want to sit back and say, oh, well, they did it because, no, it was all about money and taxpayers because everybody here pays taxes. So if you want to get it, get it right. You want to ask me, I can explain it to you. Thank you. everything. I offered everything. And there was a 
a, a job description done that was done at Robert's house. I opened it. I come to all the council meetings. I haven't seen you here. Where have you been? All of a sudden now there's a big surplus and all this going on here and now you're coming in to tell us what we did wrong? And the bottom line is that Mr. Bolognato <laughs> turned his back on the people who voted for him. Never mind the other baloney, that's what he did. And he's not being held accountable for it. And that's why we are all irate. Because he's too much of a wimp and a coward to sit up there and take what the people dish out. That's not a man, honey. That's a weak <laughs> to 
work with you and um, answer any questions. If I do not know the answer, I will get the answer for you. So thank you very much for your time and your consideration. Excuse me. Thank you. Okay, 31 townships. Could we have a list of who they are? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Rick Goldberg. I live in Galloway. Since the 1970s, that's 45 years, and uh, had a lot of family in New Jersey since the 1600s, actually. And I could go on. I had a whole list of things, but my point was going to be this. I feel like people get up to say they've been here a long time because they don't want to get yelled at. Um, after the last meeting, uh, echoing what the, what the gentleman said here, uh, after the last meeting, I heard from four different people who were afraid to speak because they, they thought they would be harangued from the audience. And I don't think that's Galloway. I, don't. I think what Mrs. J said is the kind of thing we like to hear in Galloway, where she had the decency to compliment people uh, who did good things for the township. And also what she said about come and share your ideas and so on. Don't just show up when it's all about you. That's a good thing too. But we really have to have some decorum here. It doesn't go really well for Galloway. Um, I was really came to, to talk about uh, the Stockton thing that Mary already mentioned. Because the last time I was here, I, said, I was saying, you know, when we talk about how to fill up those houses and how to get more businesses here, people aren't gonna move here just about taxes. They need a reason that's special about Galloway. And what's special about Galloway is, you know, the people, of course, and the recreation, but Stockton is very special. And the more we can make connections with them, the more people uh, will see this as a good place to live. So I had one question for Chris, maybe, I don't know. How do we get people to know that this is happening now? Do we have a means? That we don't do mailings, of course. Um, so we've had discussions We've had discussions with Stockton recently about uh, cross promotion. Um, they have a PAC center that's pretty active. Um, I am receiving emails from Stockton now about their events, so we'll probably start putting them on uh, GTV, um, depending on what the event is, possibly our own social media page, um, and possibly our calendar on our website. All right, very good. Glad to hear. Thank you all. Good evening, Council. My name is Louis Chimat. A couple things. I know that Mrs. J and I are close, and I might be a party, but we're going to disagree respectfully on the issue. And I'm signing a petition, but we're going to respect differently on uh, Councilman Maldonado because he's out on medical leave from school. I don't know why that should uh, permeate and dispute and prevent him from losing money here. So. Uh, I'm going to disagree respectfully, but I'm hoping when you do look at a resolution, there'll be a carve out and maybe some exception because we don't have anyone on council right now who's in a reserve unit. But if someone's in the reserves and they get called away, there needs to be something, in my view, set aside. Maybe the party of the person who's in reserve would have a temporary nomination while they're out on duty for the country. So I, I just don't want to see someone who misses meetings pell mell uh, or uh, with some with some justification, be be forced out of office because of a temporary assignment that they're doing for uh, our our nation. So I hope that you'll be some kind of carve out for that as uh, in in the resolution number one. Since I spoke to, uh, to Deputy Mayor uh, Crawford last time, I'm going to go to Council Person to meet uh, the Petrie, who's on the same committee, and when we're doing the budget. Uh, there are a couple things I want to ask. First of all. Do we have additional money set aside since we have differences in fees for professionals? Because we don't know what all the fees are going to be. For example, an engineer, we, don't know, we have an idea based on their bids, what they're charging per hour, and all these other things, but we don't know how many hours are going to be needed. And since they're not all third party charges on behalf of uh, other sources who need their services, that may be monies that we need ourselves. Do we have any money, extra money in a miscellaneous fund to cover that? possible additional expense. In, in other aspects, we consider cost overrun. I'm not insinuating anything, but 
to get extra money set aside in the budget for those things, for both for the engineer and for legal. I'm, I'm asking, I, you're on the committee, so I, I'm, I've already picked on Deputy Mayor Crawford last time. We'll try to both answer. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Fine, I'm right? sorry. I don't to, yeah. no, it's, it's kind of hard to predict. Kind of like when you have new professionals, it's kind of hard to predict what the expenses are going to be. You have appropriations, you have past year's budgets, and you have an idea of what you spent previously. But quite honestly, when you look at new professional, we don't really know what type of extra costs are going to be involved in addition to what we had budgeted. Well, did you budget extra money for that? For example, if it costs, like I'm using a stupid figure but for, to make it easier to calculate, you spent a million dollars last year, do you have 1150000 this year, which is like a 15% for cost overriding in case you have higher expenses? Is that included in the budget for this year? Which the actual and for the engineer, it's kind of a specific because I think we only get a budget about fifty thousand dollars for the engineer because yeah. not many projects <clears throat> that are ch are charged directly to the township through the engineer. Most of them are charged to the applicant or built to the project that he's working on. So I think in the budget itself for the engineer and Chris correct me if I'm wrong. I don't I didn't memorize every last line, but damn, they're close. I think fifty thousand was the amount we had budgeted for the engineer okay. for the municipal engineer. And that's the amount that the township, any project that the township would undertake is not being done as a specific project, like uh, our town center designation. There's a couple of little projects we have going on that we can't bill anybody for. So we, so it's a small amount. It's a small amount for the. Fair enough. I didn't realize it's a, the amount for the issue. Yeah, yeah, you know what? Yeah. It's, it's I'm a budget 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 budget. Budget. Okay, I apologize. I just, I wouldn't have bust, I'm not looking at bus chops. Um, we did include some for transition. Okay. So, a couple other things. I asked two weeks ago about the issue of getting a uh, figure from our legal representation for cost of copying because it wasn't in the uh, in the um, the RFP when I looked at that. And by the way, the RFP of others were included and, RF, and, and some of the others who didn't get the job were people who we had previously here. So I'm not trying to make this a, 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 a partisan issue. Do we have any, any new news on that information? I realize the attorney here said he's not charging. Yeah, me last time in our firm doesn't charge. I don't know. I know your firm. I'm referring to the other. We're, there are two other firms or three other firms, legal firms that have contracts with the city through RFPs. Yeah, I, 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 Bush, I apologize. I have not reviewed okay. the contract. That's sure. fine. Um, that's the second thing. By the way, since you already have the mic, um, anything new with Betty Backrack with some in lieu of? Nothing new. Nothing new to report. Can't comment. It's pending litigation. Oh, it's going to be it's now being litigated? That's, a, that's what a tax appeal is, yes. So we filed an appeal. Congratulations. I'm glad you, you came to that. Uh, th those, are the, those are the main issues. I just want to end with the fact that um, what I'm about to say is not meant to be partisan. I did not vote for the governor of New Jersey, but I do know that he just was diagnosed with a cyst and they think it's cancer, so he's in our prayers, and I wish him the best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. Chris Coleman with Dessa Avenue, lifelong resident of Galloway Township. Um, my question is directed towards the solicitor, uh, Mr. Solicitor. Um, so, Councilman Maldonado got up, left the dais, and left the meeting, correct? Okay. Uh, so, by my clock, he got up at 7.05. Council meeting started at 6.32 on the dot. We are at in excess of 7.50, so by my math, He's missed more than half the meeting. My question to you is legally, what is the definition of attending a council meeting? Is it showing up and being here at roll call, or is it staying for in excess of 50% of the meeting? Or in terms of getting paid, or in terms of being here for the staff? What, what constitutes the attendance of a council meeting? In terms of getting paid, or in terms of the statute that we call for? The attendance of a council meeting. It, it, okay. it, remove it separate from the pay, because I'm going to get there. So our ordinance doesn't define that at all. Our ordinance simply just says if you're a council person for the year, you get paid for the year, and then it's correct. I I understand that, but I'm saying that because on the public comp, on the uh, minutes and meetings we have attendance and roll call, and typically if you get the minutes, it will show if somebody has to leave or if there's conflict of interest, and it's not just council, it's zoning, planning board, other boards like that typically stipulate that. 
So based on your information, you you would agree with me in saying just the fact that you're here for roll call counts as attendance for a meeting, correct? Yes. Even though you could miss 75% of the meeting because you don't want to be here for the public comment portion, but it still counts as attendance. Yeah, if you arrive late or okay. early, the minutes will reflect. My question's for Jim Gorman. Councilman Gorman, you work for an hourly salary, correct? As yeah. does some members on council as well, correct? <laughs> yes. Okay, so if you're supposed to work from 7 to 3 and you leave at 11, you either have to use time, correct, or you don't get paid, correct? Correct. Which is probably how 60% of this room gets paid. We get paid by the hour. Um, I think you guys as governing body should probably, since there's questions about how the ordinance reads as far as salary and attendance, one thing you should stipulate, attendance has to be here for in excess of 50% of the meeting. That should be the first thing. The second thing is, if you leave early, you should be docked. We pay you $8,000. We have 22 meetings a year. Now, I understand Councilman Maldonado was excused for seven out of the 22 last year, and that's fine. But I'm pretty sure if, you know, for example, Councilman Kluke, who also works hourly, uh, I'm pretty sure if you only work 130 hours, you get 130 to pay, correct? And I'm sure that works the same with everybody else. So this is a paycheck that you earn. We should treat it like a job. That's all I have. I'd like to add on to that for a second to respond to the performance response or his comment. Is there any possible way? First of all, you know, actually, I would like to make a motion that if someone misses half a council meeting, that this is deemed an absence from a council meeting. So there's six of us here tonight who have family obligations. I could have been still working tonight. I don't stop working because my work doesn't stop. So, and I have a young kid, so I'm here, and I never miss a council meeting besides the fact when my son was born, which happened to fall on the night of a council meeting. And believe me, Tony told me when he was married time, you don't have to call in. I was about to call in from the hospital. We take our job serious. And I think actually all six of us here take our job serious. I can't speak for Mr. Ramanada. But I would like to make a motion that if you leave during a council meeting, especially during a public session or public comment, because this is, we owe you guys explanations. We owe you guys the ears to listen to your comments, to listen to your concerns. That's why we sit up here. So I'm gonna make this motion tonight that we deem Robert's absent from this meeting and anyone who steps away from public comment, unless they have a medical excuse or a family emergency, and I understand that, but this isn't the case. So I'm gonna make this motion that if you step away from a council meeting, you're basically absent from that council meeting. That's my motion. I'll second. Well, I just want to, before, how about if we work on some yeah. kind of, we need to work into some kind of terminology to move on that. So, like, even, like, we just said, yeah, no, but there's a lot of other issues. I mean, even though we're not hourly employees, there's a lot of people here. I don't have a problem with saying from one thing to another, but I just don't want to rush off the cuff. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor, not to be disrespectful, but we actually are hourly employees because when I'm laid off from my union job, and I have to clean every month, a part or every week. Correct. Partial. I have to state that I worked 17 hours and I collected $171. So they give me a partial, even though I have a union job and I make $40 a week. The state of New Jersey recognizes me working for the township 17 hours in one week is an hourly rate. I understand that, and and they take a lot more than the $171 too. <laughs> Maybe you should uh, make a motion to censor him. So, this way the governing body is on the same page you disagree with what he's done. <clears throat> so, I mean, you know, there's times that you've also put in more than 17 hours. So that's what I just want to have across the board instead of a blanket. There's there's times that, you know, some, you know, some people are here for a lot more meetings than others. And there's time when people put in a lot less. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think so, we could have a, you a full review of it, not kind of just a one-off, but could we agree that we meet together and and uh, come up with guidelines for attendance 
throughout the year. That would be the best practice, in my opinion, because I think the state law probably defines attendance, at least in terms of the statute that calls for removal of a council person. You, in your ordinance, wouldn't define attendance, at least at this point, because you're, you don't tie pay to attendance in any way. Um, so I think you would just want to make sure that you're uh, compliant. With, oh, yeah, absolutely. But I'm, I'm still addressing it. You guys can vote. There is a motion in a second. Um, but I would counsel that you put something on the agenda for the next meeting allow time to make sure that we're complying with state law in terms of defining attendance and establishing what you want to establish in terms of making pay tied to attendance of meetings because right now it's not um, so if you set a definition for attendance it won't have any effect at least at this point and it wouldn't affect what he did tonight because it's something that would be going forward so can we move that vote uh, to defer it until we meet uh, kind of get our ducks in a row and, and get it we, properly. We as gentlemen have a motion and a second on the floor, so it'll be up to them if they want to amend that motion. Okay. Um, but but are you willing to work on the new rule of policy? <laughs> I'm willing to work on this policy, but I'm not willing to move my motion. To remove my motion. Excuse me, can I, can I make a recommendation? Maybe, I think our ordinance states that uh, three meetings and then uh, the seat is deemed vacant. If you're, if you're not if you miss three meetings, so maybe if you could have something where if you miss three entire meetings, the seat becomes vacant. Mayor, that's what, that's what, ten, that's what to, I think we need to talk about. You have about to attend three program. straight, three complete meetings, not half meetings. Otherwise, his seat is deemed vacant <laughs> if he doesn't sit through three entire meetings in a row. That may be just a recommendation. Hey, I thought Cal Councilman DePietro, I think that's the issue. We got a lot of suggestions. This was obviously a little bit of a surprise that this happened. I think we need to talk about this a little further, come up with some sort of concrete, um, I, don't, I don't know, resolution to this situation before we, we, we actually lose it as a body here. Listen, I, I understand the, there's more to this than just simply making a ruling now on going forward. Exactly. However, I'm going to ask you a question, Mr. Santos. Sure. Do you agree that a councilman should leave a, me a meeting and not be here for the years of this town should listen to the people? Councilman DiPietro, my stance has always been that me personally have stayed here and sat on the seat and answered everything that I possibly could. I believe in full transparency. I, I've seen that with you as far as answering questions, absolutely. I just see a lot of people here in this audience who've taken time out of their day, their evening, to be away from their families right now, who are concerned about this township. You have somebody who's making, we don't make a lot of money up here, right? And we're not doing it for the money. I can guarantee you that. Well, most of us. Yeah. But it's a slap on the face to the people. It, it certainly is. So, I'm willing to work on something, and I think we definitely should be working on something. And actually, Mr. Santo, when I spoke to you before Reorg, yes, I mentioned that we, we need to work on some sort of ordinance to hold us council members accountable to the people, and that you need to show up to meetings and do your job. Yeah. Yes, sir, you did. And so, I, I agree with you. But I think at this point for tonight's situation, we need to talk as a body. We need to get our manager and solicitor. I just want to hold. We have a lot of different. I just feel Robert should be held accountable for leaving yeah. this meeting tonight. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to change my motion, and we censor Robert Bolinado for his actions this evening because what he did was slap the people in the face. So, we can still go back and we can evaluate some sort of protocol when council members miss meetings. You know, at some point, I know a lot of you guys have had enough. I've had enough. I've had enough of people not pulling their weight and doing their job. We have a second on his motion to censor Mr. Maldonado. I'll second. Um, we have, a, we have a, a motion to second the floor. Can you define uh, censure for everyone here and what, what that entails and what the ramifications are of that? Censure is essentially a, uh, a reasoning from council. It's kind of a voice of disapproval of actions. It doesn't uh, affect to remove them from office or penalize them anyway. 
Um, but what it is is it's the opinion of, of council towards that member. So the motion on the floor is that censured for Robert's actions tonight that he left without hearing what the people had to say and responding to their concerns. That's this. That's the motion. That Correct. That's what you're the, disapproving of. We are disapproving of his actions and not fulfill his job as a council member. Listen to the public's opinion. And respond. And we have a motion to second the floor. Yes. Okay. I just wanted to yeah. clarify what the ramifications were for Robert. Luke. Yes. Pull up. Yes. Crawford. Yes. DePietro. Yes. Well, no. <laughs> Santa. Um, in terms of tonight's actions, yes. Coppola. Yes. Oh, I, I, actually, that was a question. Gorman. Gorman. Sorry. Yes, for tonight's actions. Okay. Would you work with Frank and either uh, the manager that we could come up with some kind of organization Language. for att attending meetings and you know and therefore and then, you know and there's going to be cases where somebody has to leave. There's been times that we've phoned in, so you know I think that it's it's not an easy no, it's thing, but it's, no matter how announcing that. How we try to balance this is going to be tough. No, and I, I agree with you, uh, Mr. Mayor. I um, we honor to work with Frank or work, work with anyone. And I, and listen, we all know that we have circumstances where we have to leave or we have to phone call in. And you know what? I, I give people um, credit for actually calling in because you can just sit home and and you know not be concerned about and show up at the next meeting. But there have been members here who have phoned in. Jim, you're one of them. Yes, and you know what? It shows that you're concerned about your township and you're proud to serve this township. And uh, I would be proud to work with Frank to uh, set to look into some sort of ordinance where we can uh, hold council members accountable. And actually, if you don't do your job, you shouldn't be sitting up here. Thank you. Hi, my name is Dawn. I'm a lifelong resident of Galloway. I actually have a question for the solicitor and then a question for counsel, whoever could answer my question. Mr. Solicitor, can you specify what your job duty is in, behind that desk? I represent the township council. The township. township. As a whole, you right. represent us? No, I represent council. the township okay. council. Do you represent both parties? I don't represent any party. Okay. From me as just a regular resident that just getting into politics because of all this corruption seems to be going on, it really seems like you you favor that guy. Right, so get, like you so don't so no, 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 you don't you don't do no balance. There's no balance for you. You either don't know your job, you don't know. They people give you questions and you still don't know. Well, you not, don't know when, before the when she was asking you if you looked into things that people asked you. Isn't that your job to look into stuff that's going on? Or is it just to tell him to go run in the back of his tail between his legs? It's to look into what they asked me to and not what you, unfortunately. So the residents that are asking questions, it doesn't even give you an inkling of a thought to maybe I should kind of see where you just begin to take the money and if somebody up there asks. Well, if it gave me an inkling of thought, I would be doing more work than they're not asking me to do. So, I, I so we wouldn't want to put any more extra effort into it. Thank you. You answered my question. You just said you didn't want me to take the money. So. Whatever. So, counsel. Excuse me, what are you getting to? What are you getting to? I have to listen That's to you. That's what you said to me. One at a time. Excuse me. Stop. So. Well, I have to listen to you. One so at a time. You were talking. So my question so here is, is how anybody could sit here and let a public figure walk off, walk out. He works for us. And anybody up here in politics knows that when you're a public figure, you're a target. You're a target wherever you are, not target to be harmed, but you're a target. They're gonna dig your past, they're gonna find everything out, and all she gotta do in today's day and age is put the TV on it. We see it every day. So what he did 
That's wrong. That's really a disgrace to Galloway Township that he can't handle the heat of what the people are saying. He can't even look at us in our face and give us an answer without laughing. But we're the ones that are being disrespectful and in, in what did he say, terminal environment. He's causing it himself, hostile environment. He did it to himself. He needs to come out here and be a man, take his tail out, and stop being a coward. That's not going to happen. <laughs> Good evening, Roger Dutch, Epsecon, Pennsylvania Avenue. Um, lifelong area resident around here. I work in Galloway. I combat veteran, disabled veteran. I do fish and derbies here in the Patriot Lake. And when I first came out of the Army and I saw that being made in Patriot Lake, I would never actually thanked anyone of Galloway. <clears throat> and as a veteran, I think that's awesome. It's well used. A lot of people, it's, it's an area I can go to and reflect. Um, I'm not here for that. But never did I think as a combat veteran in over 11 years in the military until I was put out on a medical discharge that I would go around the towns asking council members and politicians to hold up their oath to help and protect the residents. So I'm asking when you look at this 2A sanctuary resolution, don't look at it as a Democrat, don't look at it as a Republican or Independent or any of that. Don't look at it as a, a gun sanctuary, people label it as. Look at it as the Second Amendment. That's what the two-way sanctuary is. And I'm tired of watching our amendments getting feathered, getting torn, getting chipped away. And I'm asking, as a local area resident, not a gallery resident, to please look at that and really consider passing this resolution. It doesn't change laws. It doesn't allow us to skip laws. But it lets us know where you stand for when we continue our climb to go higher with this. Just too many unnecessary laws getting passed. There's too many laws that aren't doing anything but hurting the law-abiding citizen. A criminal's not gonna say, oh, what, there's a sign, no gun, no weapon area. A criminal's not gonna say, oh, well, shoot, I have too many rounds in a magazine. There's just too many laws being beat down and with each law comes these underlayments and other laws attached. And a lot of people don't even realize what's being taken away from them with the Second Amendment. So I'm just simply waiting my time to come up here and beg you to really look at it and give it good consideration for all. Thank you. I forgot a really quick, Deputy Mayor, your discussion earlier about um, Mr. Curcio, the surrogate was excellent. And he does a terrific program. I'm wondering if sometime in the future council can have him come here and speak the same way. And for those who don't get to see him here, they think it's, it can be streamed or whatever and get to, and have a broader audience to, to uh, promote what he does and what the office itself does. Thank you. I'd like to apologize for my blurry now. Two wrongs don't make a right. Anybody else? Ryan Sathery, Roger Reese would have. Um, Jim, just had a quick question on record. The local 68 have any influence? Are you getting elected as mayor? As mayor? No. They did. Okay. I just want to make that clear. Uh, mayor Capola, I want to thank you for your beginning statements about how the taxes have gone down and all that. Um, but I just want to bring the light that you said, you know, you hope to work together and all that. But just remember that the left got what they wanted. They're going to run on lower taxes that they've done it the whole time for re-election, so I just want to say that. Also, last meeting, I asked um, Snake Maldonado to uh, step down. He said he wasn't going anywhere. I love him. So, <laughs> we're doing a great job. Keep up the pressure. Next meeting, we'll probably uh, wear his pants or something. <laughs> Salary. We do. We do. We do. Really, we do need to look into that. I don't like paying for that. I don't want my tax dollars going for that. Any other public comment? Joe Eckler, Galloway. 
this is unbelievable. <coughs> I mean, the corruption, the crime. Uh, is the law still, are we supposed to still, as of the Yahweh residents, do I have to obey the law still? Can I start doing illegal stuff? I checked the box for seven grams for 29 years. I didn't do anything like that with intent. 29 years ago, still checking the box. I might be up for a part, oh actually I am up for a part from the governor of Pennsylvania over this. What the fuck? I mean, what the fuck are you doing, man? Are you kidding me? My wife has stage four lung cancer. I gotta put out 15K a fucking year, and this guy oh. right here doing this? No, okay, so when are we gonna when are we gonna fix this? Because if he can break the law, are we? Are we allowed to do this or what? Can I put six plants in my house? Are you cool with that? I mean, what what, what laws are we, we we going by here? What are we doing? I don't know if he broke any laws. <laughs> okay, there there was work done at his house. I don't know if it was from work that he had done or the gas company disturbed. I don't know. Well, look, you got the cops. You got that position. Get it done. What are you t What are you doing? This is a, it's a it's a disgrace. There's high school kids here. Just yeah. And I curse in front of my kids too. It's not a big deal. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to the world. Last time I said bleep Jesus, bleep Father. Okay, one yeah. at a time, please. What are we going to do here? What, what is your course of action to fix this? I don't believe it's through me to, you know, if he did something illegal, if some, if a jurisdiction has something on it, that would be their position to do. Okay, so how? What, what do we do here? Well, some people said they sent it to different places, so maybe somebody will react. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry if I still go back. Yeah. 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 So, so. <clears throat> Anybody else? Hearing none? Do I have a motion to adjourn? I'll vote no. Okay.